Finally tonight, on the day that Samuel Beckett added his name to a massive international petition in support of Saman Rushdie, we end with an exclusive preview of Beckett's first new work for six years. Called Stirring Still, it's another example of Beckett's famously concise late style, a mere 1801 words. It's being published tomorrow in book form by John Calder in a signed limited edition of 200, each copy costing 1,000 pounds. A cheaper way to read it is in tomorrow's Guardian, which will be publishing the complete text. We'll leave you tonight with Leonard Fenton reading from the opening section of Stirring Still. Good night. One night, as he sat at his table, head on hands, he saw himself rise and go, one night or day, for when his own light went out, he was not left in the dark. Light of a kind came then from the one high window. Under it still the stool on which, till he could or would no more, he used to mount to see the sky. Why he did not crane out to see what lay beneath was perhaps because the window was not made to open or because he could or would not open it. Perhaps he knew only too well what lay beneath and did not wish to see it again. So he would simply stand there high above the earth and see through the clouded pane the cloudless sky, its faint, unchanging light and like any light he could remember from the days and nights when day followed hard on night and night on day. This outer light then, when his own went out, became his only light, till it in its turn went out and left him in the dark, till it in its turn went out. A clock afar struck the hours and half hours the same as when, among others, Darley once died and left him. Strokes now clear as if carried by a wind, now faint on the still air. Cries afar, now faint, now clear. Head on hands, hoping when the hour struck that the half hour would not, and half fearing that it would not. Similarly, when the half hour struck. Similarly, then, when the cries a moment ceased, or merely wandering, or merely waiting, waiting to hear. The same places when left day after day for the roads, the back roads, returned to night after night, paced from wall to wall in the dark, the then fleeting dark of night. Now, as if strange to him, seemed to rise and go, disappear and reappear at another place, disappear again and reappear again at another place again, or at the same, nothing to show not the same, no wall toward which or from, no table back toward which or further from, rise and go in the same place as ever, disappear and reappear in another where never, nothing to show not another where never, nothing but the strokes, the cries, the same as ever, till so many strokes and cries since he was last seen that perhaps he would not be seen again. Then so many cries since the strokes were last heard that perhaps they would not be heard again. Then such silence since the cries were last heard that perhaps even they would not be heard again. Perhaps thus the end, unless no more than a mere lull, then all as before, the strokes and cries as before, and he as before, now there, now gone, now there again, now gone again, then again, so again and again. And patience, till the one true end to time and grief and self and second self, his own. <laughs>